Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing well. Welcome to episode two of my series of Perfecting the RP Accent, where today we are going to be discussing all things consonants. We're going to be jumping straight in. If you haven't met me before, my name is Molly. I'm a voice and accent coach based in London. And this is the second part of a four part series on the RP accent. So I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. So when we are talking about consonants, for those who have watched my videos before, you'll be very familiar that a consonant is any sound where we are disrupting the airflow as it exits the articulators, such as a p, t, f, s, sh. Now, when it comes to consonants, there are two things you want to bear in mind. That is, where is the air being disrupted and how is the air being disrupted? So is it being disrupted by my lips? Is it being disrupted by my tongue touching the roof of the mouth and which part of the roof of the mouth? Then you need to ask yourself, OK, now I know where it's being disrupted. Is it being disrupted because the articulators are completely coming together and then completely releasing? Is it being disrupted with a small gap between the articulators and so on and so forth. There are so many different ways a consonant can be made. And this is the ones for the modern RP accent. Let's start by talking about R's. You'll probably know by now that the British accent or the RP accent is a non-rhotic accent. That means we only say an R if it is after a consonant such as track, train, um, me trying to think about every word under the sun. Drink. Oh my God, what are words? Print. And of course, we also say ours if they're at the beginning of the sentence, such as Roger, rabbit, ran, etc., etc. However, we are never going to say the R if it comes after a vowel sound, such as shore, park, lark, etc., etc. Now, there are some exceptions. So, for example, if an R is sandwiched between two vowel sounds, such as hero or carrot, we will say the R sound. But let's talk about how we say the R when we do say the R, because that's where things can change a little bit. Now, if you have a character or if you're looking for an accent that is a little bit closer to a London or sort of outskirts, middle class area of a London accent like mine, you might find a labiodental R. By that, I mean that my lips and my teeth are coming together like this rough and saying the R. So my teeth is touching my bottom lip. Roger, rabbit, ran. Roger, rabbit, ran. Now, a lot of people don't tend to associate that with an RP accent. And sometimes I will also say my R's with the tip of my tongue going up towards my alveolar ridge and my lips are not getting involved whatsoever, like this. Roger, rabbit, ran. Roger, rabbit, ran. Ra, ra, ra. It's really important for this one in particular that my jaw is nice and relaxed. So if you haven't seen episode one, please go back and do so because I have an exercise for that there but you can literally go to place the tip of the tongue behind the gum, behind the teeth and on the gum ridge, the alveolar ridge, and make a t, the, t, the. Then bring it away from that ridge slightly. R, 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 r. And you can practice it in that way. Then when we're thinking about the L's, there are two types of L's that we can do within the British accent. That is a light L and a velarized L. A light L starts at the beginning of a word, such as Larry, lazy, lamb, and it's nice and light. I'm doing a la 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 with the tip of my tongue, it's touching the alveolar ridge. Whereas a velarized L just means that the back of my tongue is going up towards my soft palate or my velar. That happens with a double L or if the L is at the end of a word, such as cool, full, shoulder, things like that. So a lot of accents I tend to find have a really strong velarized L. So when they say a word like full, they'll say full, cool and they'll really suck the back of the tongue up there whereas you don't want to be that heavy with it full cool it's only really like an undulating gentle wave my tongue is doing in the mouth it's really not sucking up there too vigorously again if you've seen my last video you'll know it's all about releasing in accents in general especially in this accent let's now talk about devoicing or dropping our t's so devoicing is basically where we're coming off our voice or we're switching a voice consonant into a voiceless consonant. Again, if you need more context, I've done a video already all about this. And dropping the T's is when we're just gonna skip the T's. My rule of thumb is that if you are really sliding through a whole thought, then it's pretty normal to drop your T. So for example, if I had a sentence such as, what are you thinking about? If I was to really slow it down, I would probably say, what are you thinking about? Whereas if I was to skim through it, what are you thinking about? I'd probably drop it. 
Again, it's a little bit tomato, tomato, kind of depends on the sound you want. The more formal you're gonna be, the more you're probably gonna keep those T's in. To be perfectly honest, I believe you can have a modern RP accent and not stress every single T there is. It depends on the character, it depends on the context, and it depends on the energy. And last things I will say is just some troubleshooting some things for some people. I would say in general that when we're thinking about how hard to push plosive consonants, especially when it comes to k and g, is I would try to relax. A lot of people, let's take a Birmingham accent, for example, would say singer, or they might really k their k's in the north of England, whereas a modern RP accent would really just relax. Singer, kicking k, there's quite a lot of aspiration coming out of my mouth at all times. It's when you get to a more heightened RP state, that's when everything becomes a little bit crisper. But as you could just tell, I just said crisper, k crisper. It's almost like I'm sighing out on that plosive rather than a crisper, crisper. As soon as you can feel tension creeping up into your neck, you're probably overexerting. So again, really try to start every time you practice with a little drop in, with a little bit of a body scan, like we talked about last episode, and that's going to massively help you trying to find that release when it comes to the modern RP accent. And so those really encapsulate the biggest consonants that I wanted to touch on in today's video. Of course, there is so much more. And I may have a project coming up where I'm wanting to actually shoot some really solid, good, lengthy videos all on perfecting the RP accent. So do let me know in the comments if you would like that. It's going to be available probably on another platform, which I'll talk about in another time when and where possible. Um, but yeah, let me know if you would be interested in more content such as this, or just let me know if you have any questions. As always, my 15 minute free consultation link is in the LinkedIn bio, and you can also reach out to me on any of my social media platforms. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next time. Thanks everyone. Bye. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and share with a friend, please. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>